Hi Antonio, how are you? Hello, muy bien. Que bueno. <laughs> uh, so I want to start by asking you, um, where are your parents from? They're from Mexico. They were, my father came from... Did your parents come from Zacatecas? Zacatecas? Uh -huh. Yeah, my, my father was in Zacatecas. Uh -huh. and my mother came from Chihuahua. Uh -huh. And what are your parents' names? My father says a uh, name, uh, Niceto. And my mother used to be Lucia. Uh -huh. And what is their last names? Uh, Olvera. Olvera. And um, your parents then were from Mexico and then came here to Arizona. To Arizona. And why, do you know why they came here? Well, I guess uh, somebody uh, talked to them and they said it was everything was nice like over here. And she wasn't making too well over there. So I said, oh, well, let's go back to Arizona and see what we can do. And then a friend... You know him, and he was he was coming, and he said, "You know, I, I have to, gonna have to walk because I got no money, and we're gonna have to travel for a food." And then this uh, person just uh, found out. He said, "Don't worry." He gave him money to to come uh, to come across here, like walk up, walk, walk, and he stopped and get a, a I guess a little train. Probably up to Tucson, someplace. If when he came from Pedro, that this man gave him some money so he could come over here. And then we came out here and then walking around looking for a job over here. And then my brother was, they were, they were born in Mexico too. I had a brother, two brothers, and a sister from over there. You were born here, right? I was born here in Arizona, yeah. And what I, was the town? I was uh, born in Seligman. Seligman. It's about, well, uh, from here as far I think it's 50 some mile. And then from there, I think it's another 30 miles from from Ashford down to Seligman. Uh -huh. And what did your parents do over there in Seligman? Uh, it was just hanging around a little bit and, and some people Try to come and help him and give him a little job doing something to repair or fences or he put him to work uh, an extra game for the Santa Fe, but only last not too long, maybe a couple of months, and, and it was all again. Okay. So he'd been driving and then we, then we moved to Mayor, and then the rest of the family, they were born here in Arizona. And what did your family do out in Mayer? Uh, but, well, not too bad because I think my dad used to work for double plie uh, years ago. He used to like a handyman so that they take him to work somewhere where they work in the street, like the Washington Street. They, they pour cement on the barrels and then they put the sticker in it. What year they done it? And then from then there, and then he got sick, and they couldn't make no more, and he's laid out. And then my brothers were, were working, so he they, they brought the, the food for us and everything, and, and bought us a little house there. And then we stayed there. We stayed there. So when he, she died, she got, well, I think they, they called it, they had uh, like a cancer, some kind of cancer. And and then they got ripped right to the right, it's so bad, I couldn't even do nothing. At night, I used to, the hands were wet, got to all step off, I couldn't, couldn't do nothing with the hand, I couldn't even need for the hand. So I sat down and, and gave her some food for the shit, a little spoon. Uh -huh. And then at night, she had yelled so much because she was hurting so much. She started to turn around, so I helped her. I slept with her all night, just turning around and set her down. And then I fed her in the morning, I fed her any of the meal, and gave him some water so he can drink water. But that's the way they ended up. That was the end of it. Uh -huh. and so when did your mother pass away then? Uh, I was around, around the 40s, I don't know, 46, 47. And, um, and then you 
never found out if it was cancer or anything? I think they mentioned it was some kind of a ca cancer, but I don't remember what it was. Uh -huh. And so when did your, and your father stayed alive after that? Uh, so, yeah, for a few months, maybe a couple of months. It, and he got sick and he couldn't make it no more. And then he got, got so sick that I put him in the hospital. And they stay in Fresco for maybe two weeks, maybe. And they couldn't do nothing, so they sent him to Phoenix. And he, had to, he was sick out of the stomach or something. And I was working at the Iron King and Dan, and he was over there in the hospital, and then they gave me a call. That he was very, very sick, and you had to go see him. So he went. We stayed the whole day, and I asked my boss to let me out a couple of days, three days, to see him. So he came back, and then came back to the mine again and working. Uh, about probably about uh, one o'clock, he called me again. He said, you better come because it's very sick. I don't think you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. And then we took off, me and my brothers, Austin, when we went. And, and then we just got there, and just, she just passed away for that. We were getting close to the hospital. And that was it for him. Okay. And that was in Phoenix? That was in Phoenix. Okay. And then can you tell me the names of your brothers and sisters? Uh, my sister was named Jenny. And the uh, older uh, brother lives with uh, Steve. And then they had one, another, a little older, because they were almost together. He was, uh, his name was Felix. I had two brothers. I don't know how my mom put him another. So we called him a uh, big Philip and a little St Felix. And then I got another brother. He's still alive, but he lives on... Uh, Oh, by the other side of two sons. So then you have Agustin, Big Felix, and Little Felix, and then your other brother. And the other brother. And then your sister Jenny. And my sister Jenny. Okay. And then, um, where did you go to school when you were young? Oh, when I was young, I went to school in Mayor uh -huh. for a while, and then my brothers, they, they, they're looking for jobs, so they, he, we moved for maybe a couple of years, maybe, we went to live and move to uh, Jerome. I think we were there, we stayed like a couple of years. And then they finally opened the mines, I go here, so we come back. And we were just back and forth. Whenever they did, they go up there and they went to Jerome and we stayed for a while and come back to, back to Mayor. And then was this was the one that we live all the time in better. Mm -hmm. So then you would go to Jerome and then... Yeah, the sometimes I used to go to Jerome and then my brother used to work over there, so I used to go over there and to help him and stay over there in Jerome too. So did you work in the Jerome mine? No, no, I don't work in no place. I just visit my sister-in-law oh, okay. and my brother. And then... Um, do you have any fun memories, like when you were a kid? What did you do for fun as a kid? Well, I used to play f uh, baseball, basketball. I don't play too much of the football, but I love the baseball b better. And then that's what we played. And that's when I was a mayor, we had a little team, and we come to town here and play, play with the boys over here. Uh -huh. And sometimes we beat, and sometimes we laughed at something. We would start driving around. That's it. And so did you play uh, the peop the boys from the Granite Street? Uh, yeah, some of them Granite Street and some from just around the, around town. There's those places there. Uh -huh. Like Washington and Granite, West Granite and Daru. This is where I live, next to the street there. And I was just there. Yeah. And then I said, well, so I better look for a job. And, and then I had a, a friend of mine, he's a father-in-law, he used to wait for the telegraph for the summer pay. And he said, well, and he said, well I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to get you a job. So he took one of the, took one of the bosses, 
and the boss will say, yeah, well, you can put, you can use it, but you can, you can go to work now until you're 21. You have to be 21 to go to work for some of it. Was that your first, that was it? Your first that was the first time, the big time I had to work of it. And I worked for the Santa Fe for nine and a half years. And so you worked in the telegraph then? No, I I used to get my uh, my all my materials to to go to work, but I used to start to stop in the whip uh, uh, the station. If for but I used to just across it. And then I worked from from there down quarter like a going to quarter Johnson. Uh, this. A couple of miles on the other side of there used to be a little mine up there, but the truck used to go with us and bring the gold from the other mines, and and then they bring them truck and dump it right there, and then sometimes they they bring a lot of oh, a lot of cows and everything and, and the trains and we would go over there and, and unload on them and back and forth, and sometimes they had a lot of cheap they had. About three or four hundred sheep that come up and put you put them in the corral, and then the the guys who owns it, who owns it, he used to pick them up in the truck and and leave it out there for you know where the some smeller is in there, mayor. He, he used to they have a little ranch up there. And so those were sheep. <laughs> there were sheep on him. And do you know if they were Basque herders sheep or? Well, one of the guys he was that he was taking care of it, and then. And one time he 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 said, "Well, so how yeah, do you want to go take care of him? Because I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks or three weeks." Yeah, I go. Then from the house, I used to walk up the hill where they had to go. So then I took him out of the field and take him out there where they can feed. And maybe about three or four o'clock when I come back, put him in back in the yard. And my brother, my brother law used to have some too. They used to have a little ranch up in the, or in the hills out there. And the, that was in Mayer. Right? And there was in Mayer. Yeah. That was in about a couple of miles from from there up to up the mountain. Oh, okay. And uh, so then you basically got a job at the Santa Fe Railroad. And then I got a job because the guy, the uh, man, was a, oh, because you go, we we need you, we you come and work for us. And was, okay. So I said, well, well, I'll go away. I'll say it was in 91 or 92. And he said, okay, go to work. But now you are 21 now, you can come and work. And this one I worked for nine and a half years was for the Santa Fe. They used to manage to work in mayor, out of town, out of mayor, back and forth. They used to come back to Humble. We used to drive the little train and work in Humble sometimes. And then they come up there. And to the other side, the other way, and we come up to Prescott, right there by the Granadels. There used to be the station there where the truck would get into the, to town. And then, did you work for the railroad station before you worked for the Iron King? Yeah, uh, it was a, a job. The first one was a Santa Fe. Okay. And then, um, I'm going to go back a little bit. Did you ever get married? Yeah, we got married. When did you get married? When was it, 50, 60, 66? Okay. And then uh, what is the name of your wife? Virginia. Virginia. Oh, we call him the Virgin. Everybody called him Virgin now. He used to call him. For her name was Virginia. And where did Virginia you... Mary Colbert. And where did you meet her? I uh, met her here with my, my sister used to live here in uh, Right there in Granite, used to live there. Then I used to come to town, and when I saw her, and we were just were next door, we used to live, and I used to come around, and, and finally we got acquainted, and and I said, well, I think this is the right girl for me, but I'll just hang around and look for her, and we'll come to it, and we used to come in her house and everything. He said, okay. And then they used to, her father said, Okay, we we see the stand on the porch outside. It's okay. It's nine o'clock. It's time to get in. <laughs> so I had to leave, and I had to be walking around. And I had one of the friends of mine, the, from mayor, he used to he used to come to town. So I get rides from him to go to town, and then sometimes he was over there. Or he probably had a girlfriend or something, 
And he used to drive, and I used to be running around in the park and go to my sister's house, because she was living there in the Brennan. And she said, oh, we got there. And, and I used to come here. He was sometimes he was walking humble to walking down here to come to see her. And then people that I that talked to them and my friends and oh you work for Miro for me all the way to Prescott, yeah, oh, I I hiked down there once and sometimes I would like to get a ride and I come to town. And then I had to look for a drive two or three to the money because the people but the one who was supposed to give me a ride he was he was all there running around <laughs> with his girlfriend. So I said, well, how about wait? And there used to be a restaurant that was, it used to call it uh, Central. It was a restaurant there. And I, oh, I'll just stay here and have a little cup of coffee or something. And see, well, he'd come back and pick me up. And they used to come back about 1 o'clock, sometimes 12, and then we back to mail. Oh. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Then when I got the job, went to job to work at the ranking, then I used to get, I used to have rides from there, from my brother-in-law or my brothers, and they used to come and stay here. Sometimes they used to they come at night, at my days off, or Saturdays off, and come off here and I stay down here, and then I go back. And then they had, then afterwards they were they put buses. They used to run the buses from from the. Uh, but it goes all the way to, to Phoenix, from Phoenix to Prescott. From Prescott, they used to go up to Flagstaff, I guess they would go. They used to drive. It. And this is why I used to get the buses to come from here up to, to, to town. And were these buses for the Iron King mine? It was for Iron King mine. Okay. Yeah. So they would bus people from Phoenix yeah. even? And some, some of them were from Phoenix, but they stay here in town sometime and then they go back. And uh, that's why I used to get the buses and everything. So it was Prescott to Humble? To, to Humble. Okay. And then, um, so let me see. And then, so before you, uh, when you, you moved from Seligman to Mayor and then you moved to Prescott. Then. Yeah. And when did, it, what was the time period that you moved to Prescott? Like in what years? Well, I think I got married. When they got married, I'll, I'll stay here in town for. And then I used to live with, for her mom. Yeah, at the house, and said, "Well, we got a little room downstairs. You can kind of stay." Well, I stay there. Mm -hmm. He gave us a little place because I had no money, and no job, and everything. And then once in a while, I used to go for my father-in-law to work at the quarries over there at Drake. And those were the flagstone. Flagstone, yeah. I used to, yeah, it was a flagstone. I used to just get all the scrap and put it in the big piles. I used to get the wheelbarrow, have him up. And then he had a lot of a lot of flagstone, and I used to help him to put it, load him in a truck so he could come to town and sell it. And um, when you moved, when you were in Prescott, did you was there a lot of Mexican families living in? Prescott? No, there were kind of few. There were kind of few Mexicans. No, maybe it's just when you had about, about only about four white people who were working with the Santa Fe. And and then he used to live with the uh, the Santa Fe. He used to have a, a bunkhouse where he used to stay, live there. And from there, he used to go to work, whatever would take us in the car, in the little train, or whatever. And this we were leaving. I lived in Mayor for a little while, and then I moved to Prescott. And then I went to Chino. And I said, well, it's going to cl close in all the second, they close and everything. So they take everything, and then I came to Prescott. And I think I want to stay about maybe two months. He said, well, we're going to close it. We're going to close it. No more tr for work here. So I kept, then I got transferred to Drake. Oh, okay. And so that was after the Iron King That's was closed. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, in Prescott, do you rem did you live on what street? Did you live on Granite Street? On Granite Street. I used to live on Granite Street. Do you remember any of the families? Like, I don't know if you, uh, like the Carreras, was there families that lived? Yeah, they said this time of that, and then they had her aunts used to come from Phoenix. And stay over here, and, 
and then we used to do camping and then we do a lot of camping with them and then her uncles and his nephews and everything and then we used to go and then we used to go to uh over there by Williams and they had a, a brother in law his brother in law his father had a uh, I had a cabin up there he, uh, he used to stay up there. And we do all the fishing around up on top of the mountains over there. And how did you be decide to become a miner? Well, I saw my brother said, "Well, it's, it's a good mine, it's but a little, probably a little dangerous. But if you take care of yourself, you'll be okay." And he says, "Well," and then he said, "Well, uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, well, we're going to start hiring some people and see if you can." Well, see, I can get you a job because you know the farming pretty good, and they talked to him, and he said, "Okay, I'll bring your brother. He wants to work over here." And I went to work, and they worked all the days. I used to work uh, two weeks day shift, two weeks night, and two weeks graveyard. And. Um and what was the year that you started working as a miner? Probably about 64, 65. And then, when did you first hear about the Iron King mine? Was it through your brother? My brother, because he had my three or four brothers working there. And then there was Steen, he used to work there. And, he, and then we used to, we, from there, we used to, I used to ride with him to, to work, to work with, that, to go to the mine. And so I was seeing your brother. When did he started working for the mine? Because uh, I remember, he, well, he he worked for I don't I don't remember how many. Years. He probably worked about twenty years working there, and then he got hurt and he broke his leg, bringing the stuff out with the rails. I guess he slipped over and bumped into the box and, and broke his leg. So he was out for a long time. And um, I guess you told me then that you took the bus that was taking miners from Prescott. Yeah, from Prescott. I used to work about a half a block from the house out to the street to, to catch a bus with could stop and pick us up to, to go to work. And then they would drop you off? Yeah, right drop there. it off there. Mm -hmm. And then um, after you got your job, then you started working. What was your main work? At the Iron King. Well, the main thing is I went to work, and I did, well, I had a different all kinds of different jobs. When I started, I started running the, on the grill where they dump the, the oil into the, to the grill, and and clean them up. And sometimes you had to big rocks; they had to break it, and I had to get a double jack to break them because they were, they don't go into hold by little squares, twelve by twelve. You had to break it to. To go to go down, here. and then I drive and back, and then finally said, "Well, you could go start loading some cars. I'm going to put you in that." So I used to get my little, little like a little train. I used to get five or six cars, sometimes ten, and go back to the drift to the tunnels and fill them up, and then bring them down to the station to dump it in the grill. And back and forth, I had about ten, ten to fifteen cars I had. And how far down the shaft were you working? At, uh, uh, last time, well, I started one level and then another level because they used to transfer for people that don't come to work. And they said, well, Tony, you go, go, you go with this man who go for help him over there. So I worked in one, one level to another. But the, the, far, the far we went down to the mine, way down the mine, it was 42,000 feet. And then you mentioned that it was hot in the mine. Right? It was very hot. It, it, it was probably run to 95 to 90s. And, and then it was so hot and then it was too messy, gassy. And then you go back to where they blasted, plus to the people that drilled and drilled and dynamite. And then you had to wait to set the dust down and then go in and wet it up so so we can load it up and then 
and working and fill her up and fill her up and put water so so we won't make a dust of them. But it was so hot, it was 90 to almost, a, about 95 to far as I went to, it so was the hottest it down. And then so during your time then you were blasting, you weren't doing cut and fill. Yeah, we were blasting. When I used to run my little bed, and then sometimes you had to have big rocks. I had to put a little, maybe a handful of dynamite and a cap, and then plaster down, and then light it, and light it, and then go out just to plaster, plaster rock or two big. And that's why I used to fill all them cars and fill them up and take it down. And then sometimes you it was kind of wet. Sometimes it would get wet and get stick to the to the little wagon like a little trailer. And then I had to dump it to the to the grill, and it was so, it was so thick the whole thing went down to the grill. So I had to come back to the station and get a chain and, and a little come along and bring them up again, and then go back and get another load. But all day, and then we had a lot of. I used to put the water line, and I used to put, uh, I think it was 24-inch uh, covers. I used to put the covers for air, to put, to bring the air so it could be, blowing them seems to be nice and cool, a little bit cool, but it's still, still was too hot. And, and, then put, and then come back and, and put all my tracks to get to, for I could get the cars in there. And then it, whenever the guys were working over here, Drilling and everything, and the other guys already been blasted on the other side, so we had to go over there and, and clean it out. When they were drilling it over here, and then by the time they got they got loaded everything, and we all were cleaning up. You, me, and the other guy, clean it up, and then we start going back, uh, but taking everything back, and they said, "Okay, everybody out," and then there was another. I used to. Take turn, he said, go back over there and go over here. And she said, nobody is in there before I start playing. And then he got about to 50 to 60 holes that was filled up with dynamite. He said, okay, everything. And he checked everything, there was nobody there. Okay, everybody out. And he stayed there till everybody was in the clear. Went back to the station to get the cage. And then he lighted them up. He had a whole bunch of them and they put it. Little sparkles, the light was a little sparkle. And then he takes out. By the time he gets to the to the station, there was the bronze of the blast and everything. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it used to work, and then the guys, just, they were trying to hurry up, and then they make a mess. They, they make a spill, and then I had to go over there and clean it up before I put my machine down. Yeah, it was, I used to get mad because the the, uh, the guys were already they were already make the mess. We were coming out already, and I had to clean up for the next day before I could go in there. And and they come back the next day and they well, all of a sudden I had to clean the whole thing to get my cars out. Okay, Antonio, I don't know if you can talk a little bit about what we were mentioning before about some of the accidents that you witnessed. Well, I was this actor. Well, was I was working one at a town one. I wanted to fill the, fill my car, and I it had like, like a little doors, like little doors. You had to take the door out to fill the car, and one run came up there and it came to the side and and bounced into there and bounced into my finger, and broke it. Ah, it goes to the top. I tried to take it out, I couldn't take it out. It kept jamming into. And a little bucket, you know, like a little bucket. It got stuck and funny. I had to work on it. To my finger, the whole blast up and bleeding and everything. So I went down to the station and put medicine on it and taped it up. And it was okay for a little while. But once in a while, I used to give it a little pain. You know, it was, was hurting a little bit, but it wasn't bad, too bad. And then I see some people that were working there. To, and... Sometimes they, they had big tunnels was filled up with sand or gravel and everything. And sometimes, sometimes it got stuck, sometimes probably got wet a little bit, and then stick to the wall. So I had to get up a stick about 15 feet long and put, put a little point, they had a little point, and they had to poke it over there to let it, let it break down. And sometimes it 
break down and then the whole thing come down is you don't stay in the you don't stay, you have to move out to the side because otherwise you will not go down and and he said no I better watch it and and then sometimes he used to tie the dynamite in the post and, and then when get ready to light it up and then put it up there where they could blast it to make it loose so it could come down. And you were mentioning that there was an accident with the dynamite too. Uh, or was there or was there an accident with your brother? My brother, yeah. Yeah, but he was uh, he was he was loading the dynamite to put in the hole. And he was sitting probably on the side a little bit from the side of the, and then he was in the nails. And then he was loaded and then the rock came in. But and then afterwards, we did, uh, when I went, I went and they, the boss said, well, here, take this big bar. And when they blasted everything, and everything was blasted at the cave was already. And then you go in there and poke all the rock and see if any, any rock was loose. Because sometimes you can see the cracks about that big, sometimes about that big. And then you have to go there and put it inside the the rock floor, you can clean it up so, so it will be tight, the ceiling will be tight. And sometimes you have bars about 15 lo feet long, you have to be packing it on the wall and the ceilings just to see any rocks will be solid so before you go in. And so then your brother got a rock hit him on the head. He got a rock on him, a piece of rock. I've I never seen it when, the, when he got there, but but after I was coming up and they said, your brother got killed over here. They said, everybody had to get out. They had to bring him out. And yeah, they said, well, we went out and they came back. Next day, we went back to the house. It's like, if you go home, you're going to straighten up all this here and find out the foundation and see exactly, exactly what happened. And, and then the next day, I went to work again. But the same thing, but I don't know, better start washing and washing everything. The first thing I do is just check all my parts of whether it'll be to be solid, so nothing can come down. Mm -hmm. And did uh, was that Felix, Big Felix? Or yeah, Big Felix, Felix. Yeah. Big Felix. And did where did he uh, get buried? Do you know? Uh, he got buried here, uh, here in Prescott, I think. And then um, was there? Uh, can you tell me about the locker system that you were telling me? Well, when the locker was just after you, after you, you're done your work for eight hours, and then when it's time for the, the other team was coming in, and we were going out, and then we got up, and then we get the cage and get all the clothes, all my clothes are wet, it's so hot, so, so I said, ah, I better we go there, and then when we went to the store, to the shower room, and then get the and then they had hangers was hang to hang your clothes, and then you put it up. And then the next day, you come into work and you get the clothes, and there was so much powder in the in the pack because it just it set up on itself. It was so hard. Because mm -hmm. so, it was the sweat and the sweat, the sweat and the heater and everything was getting so hard. And then they had to take showers and and then they had to take showers in the herd to catch the bus because sometimes. Some some people that were in a hurry they don't they don't want to wait for nobody. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had a number, right? Uh, I'll, yeah, it was a uh, three three twelve. And how did you do that? So you would come in and what did it you? Went, do? Well, when you used to do it like a the door like that, they had a little square like that, and they had all this metal was hanging up there. The first day, you come in to go to work, you get your metal. And then you go to the next door where you go out to get the cash, the cash. then you put your metal on that one. So when, when they were, everybody was working, the, the boss used to come and check, well, this, uh, this metal is okay. This metal is, somebody's down there yet because the metal is still, the, the coins are still there. And then they, they wait and they said, well, he's, he's, he, they don't move to that one. So they go down and, and look for him. And then they, Probably they were working and then they forgot the timing, so they had to go over there and look for them. So that's how they knew if somebody was. So, so that's the way they knew they were there, or either 
Yes, it was over here, it was in the clear. And do you know if they buried anything in the shafts or in the mine tailings? No. Uh, no, they never buried anything. And well, then, that, uh, no, 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 they, they got killed, but they did take them out right away. Mm -hmm. He used to bring the treasure and put them in and bring them out. And how about barrels of like acid or anything like that? Did you ever hear that? Uh, no, all, all that was out, outside. Okay. See, they had another crew up out there. They took the, ro the rock and then they took it to the mill and they grind it. After it all grind up and everything, and then they bring the truck and fill them up. And then they used to go down down the hill for the Santa Fe to float them in the Santa Fe trucks, uh, uh, boxes. And then they would take it to the smelter. And they would take it to the smelter or either down the, uh, they used to send it to uh, Paso. And then, um, you, so then you like you said, during your time, there was no cut and fill. It was just blasting. Of it was the blasting, shaft. yeah. And then, do you think, uh, did you think it was very dangerous when you were blasting more of the shaft? Well, oh, yeah. He, if you blast it, you don't know what to do. It. The rock is loose. And you go in there, and, it, and the rock comes out. Because it, sometimes it shakes too much. Sometimes it loses the rock. The rock. So you have to go there and, and pick. Pick at the walls and everything to see everything goes tight to to get in to go to work. And so you would put these metal bars there. Metal kind of bars, the like car bars are what they used to be. And then those would help so things. Yes, yeah, to help the, the 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 chef of where you at. And then you also mentioned uh, that you worked until the time that they were closing the Iron King mines. Yeah. Yeah, they were closing her up, and uh, I knew that the, the foreman, he should be pretty nice for me. He said, well, we're going to go close now. Uh, everybody's going to everybody's be gone. They're only going to hire so many to to clean, to bring the stuff out. And my brother was working in there. He used to bring the red. He used to, we used to load them up, and he used to take them out, out and he un unloaded outside. And you have batteries, you have batteries, probably about this wise of them little batteries when you hook up your, your cars and everything. And they have ramps to, to light them, so the electricity charging them. And sometimes it was kind of hard, you had to walk back and forth to get it up because someone came up. And Victor, Victor, he was one, one of them at the he tried to put it up, and I don't know how he got into the side, close to the side of, of the rail, and he had a finger in, and the plate come up and cut his hand. So he cut his fingers? His fingers, right? all the fingers. I and then I had to go around out there and, and tie them up pretty good. Well, I've done it, not the other guys who were working with him, and they brought him up, and they taped it up, and you brought him to the top, they had a little L. Uh, uh, ambulance. Okay. And did they have like a on like a little nurse station or anything? Yeah, a little bit, some of the, but not very much on it. Mm -hmm. And then, so then you were having to, so you were the few miners that were employed when you were taking everything yeah, Everything out. else. They had big material, big rails. They had what they call it uh, the Y. That's what you, your track moves to one side to put the car in and then you move it back this way so the other car can go by. It's like a little, little wise, you know. And then so you were having to take, pull all the tracks out? And all the tracks, the railroad track, uh, tires. It was not too big because it's just a sudden. But he used to load all that and all the rails and all the machinery, and all the back holes, all kinds of machines, he used to put them up and take them into the station and load them up and then send them up and my brother was up there and he'd take them out and send them back. Mm -hmm. And what did, so they were basically trying to sell all that off? Yeah, they wanted to try to clean up before they close everything and they tried to best what they could, where they can take out. I think I only work, I think I worked about two weeks like that, taking the stuff off, bringing it to the station and loading them up and and my brother and him didn't take him out and unload it outside. 
And then afterwards, uh, then when you took everything out of the shafts and everything was clean, then you just clean. worked on top. And then you work on top and then, okay, that's it. There's no more job. Oh, and did and did you have a retirement? Was there? They don't give you no high retirement. No retirement. I had a friend, one one of my friends. He did, he worked about fifteen years when he got retired, and he went to put like get to retirement. He says there's, there's no money there, uh -huh. so they don't give him no no retirement or nothing. And that was for um, the Iron the Iron King mine. And then, um, so then you were without a job. Without a job for quite a while. And then for, I used to work from the house all the way about four blocks down to the to the city hall. And I go every day, every day looking for a job. Every day. And I had to, and I go over there walking from the house over there. It took me 20, 30 minutes to get over there. And I walk over there and, okay, I'm here looking for a job. And other guys have seen me, well, okay, well, let's hang on. You're going to hire someone, but I don't know when. As soon as we can find something. Oh, okay. Then I used to walk back, and I used to fail with my father-in-law to build a, 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 a patio. Because he had to work. He used to love a lot of He used to get on all kinds of rock and bring in his truck and fix it patio and he had rocks to sell. He has big rocks that look really quick rock. And then there's uh, the, the what do you call this? Was it the flagstone? The flagstone. Then I used to go once in a while I used to go over there and stay over there two days, three days, help him over there, clean up all the crap to make room where he can start working on it. And sometimes you used to, to here's a rock here, you peel up what was big sticks that had to peel it to make a knife, you know. So it was, I had a little chisel, I uh, tried to break all that little piece of, to make a knife. Uh -huh. And so then you helped for a little bit to try to, like in the quarry and build Yeah, that's that, that to help, that's to help him to work it. And he, he's had a place up there, a little house up there, we used to stay up there. And where's this in, where was this? In Drake. In yeah. Drake, okay. At the course up there. No. And then, um, you, oh, I actually want to ask you a question. I'm going to go back. And you told me that once the, there was the cage cable broke. Oh, yeah, what well, level you were going, it was a, it was, it was a day, day, day. You were going to work and they said, well, Better way for because just uh, the cage, the cable from the cage, he bust it and all the cable went down about 400 to 600 feet down. All the cable went down. You had to come and get the other cage and, and walk down and then tie it out before you can put it up. But the cable busted and a good thing nobody was inside of the cage, so they came from himself. And then the, they got uh, they called them a little dogs deal when they. Uh, when it breaks, then clamps, they put the clamp into the tighter so it goes no farther and down. And like it, a little brace, it brace it up so it won't move no more. Uh -huh. And did it, it work? It, it worked, yeah, it worked up. Yeah. And then, um, I'm gonna, then before we leave the Iron King, do you think that your job as a miner at the Iron King was dangerous? I, I would say yes, because every time when you go to work, you have to to check it over before you start working mm -hmm. and check everything walls and everything in the track. You had to move all your tracks and, and get everything ready to go in. And then you had to work in the walls and see if the rock was loose. Because sometimes it would have cracked like that and it was loose. And sometimes was, when they blasted someplace else and it was blasting bottom, you know how to chase. And then rock will come and loose and down it comes. Uh -huh. and do you have any night? like very nice memories of the friends or people or I don't know if you attended picnics or anything of the Iron King. Well, well everybody was very nice. They were very, very nice. They were ready to get together and we would talk together and, and sometimes we would get out and, you know, it's too much dust over there. This stuff over here is at the little bar over there on the highway. We stop and have a couple of beers and, 
and then we come home. Was that the Chema's bar? The Chema's bar, that's a little, that's a little lady, that's a little super tough. I used to stay there sometimes to call in time, but I don't drink that much. Just a few beers and that's it, I don't drink no more. <laughs> and then I stopped drinking a little Coke and something like break it down. And then some other guys who used to drink and then he's, he had some fun time and get loaded. And then they, 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 they were driving, they were driving for tough one time. Somebody uh, told me that they, they were going and they were having a little beer and one of the guys got the can and threw him outside and the highway patrol was right behind him. He had to stop him. He said, well, and then they told him well, what happened. And to, oh, was, we had too much powder in it, too much gas in there. So we wanted to suck it down. They said, well, next time, don't do that, because next time I'll put you in jail. So we, he was a pretty good guy. He said, hey, you need to go, but I'm going to be watching when you get home. And so then that was, from what I have heard from other people, the Chemas Bar was a place that a lot of the miners were... All the, almost all the miners. And then sometimes people used, people used to used to go to work, and they stopped at the bar, and then forget about the mind. They, they, they start drinking and they, they didn't work. Mm -hmm. no. And do you remember who were some of the miners that you worked with? Do you remember some of the names, some of the Mexican miners? I don't know if you want to mention them. Well, I see had a lot of bad, the people that work with it. I knew that really when really uh, what? Uh, Willie, Willie, Willie Salazar. Uh, we used to call him uh, Richard. And one of the boys of their bar, so I used to work with him. I used to work with him and we down there together sometimes. He yep. used to go all the way back to give him a hand every time. And then, um, so then after that you started um, working, um, or you stopped working there as a miner, um, then you got, you went and worked for your father-in-law a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I used to go up, help him out and clean up his house and, and have a good time up there. After we done, he's done his old job and I help him and then we come to eat and we said, Stay in the house, they make the meal, and then had the little fireplace outside. We would stock and have a few beers in the fireplace till about at nine, ten o'clock at night. Just to, everybody get together around the fire, and have a have a good time on it. And then you also said that you worked for the city of Prescott too. After and then after that, uh, I looked for a job, and I went to know, and I don't know doing guy there. He said, hey, it's Rudy, he said, you got any jobs? Well, no, not right now. He said, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, I think we're going to start hiring some more. And he said, okay. And every day I used to walk from there all the way down to the to city barn. Every day I'd be there about 15 minutes early just to show him how I was looking for a job. And then the other guys would start looking at me and they said, oh, he's going to look. He's looking pretty good. He's looking for a job. And sometimes they, they, they talk to the supervisor and they talk to the foreman to, to hire me. And I said, well, I don't think I was, took about maybe about a month. And, they said, and then the, I was working at the house of my father-in-law, building up a foundation and a patio. And he came around and he said, hey, OK. He was talking pretty good. and. It, well, they said, uh, you want to work? This, this is what I'm really looking for. I'm looking for a job. Okay, be there Monday, Monday at 7 o'clock. Be there. Okay. And then Monday, Monday, I, went, I get up early, be there in time. Okay. You go with, used to go with this guy. <laughs> he used to uh, work for the sanitation. He used to do uh, Picking the garbage for, them. and then the guy he used to drive the, the foreman used to drive the truck, and he, me and the other he used to put, sit in the back of the truck, filling the cans, go get the garbage over here, get the garbage here, and sometimes my neighbor used to get a big box for you know, 
with the uh, toilet tapers, them big buckets. He used to carry one, and he'd go one side and I'd go to the other. And picking all the garbage all the way to the street, all the streets. And that's sometimes where, and sometimes there was a tub with a little lady. There was a, she was so old, boy, and she had garbage can, but there was metal. They were heavy, and then she fed them up. They hardly pick them up to dump them. And then she had a lot of dogs and cats. Man, you think cans were stinky. Oh, it makes me sick. And finally, I says, oh, I'm not going to do this no more. I got the garbage can, put them in the truck. And I says, okay. Throw the cans, and next, next, next time, they bought the new ones, little ones. But then talking cats and everything, you know, cans and everything, the smell is terrible. It, that little lady was, after I found out, that little lady was kind of, he was old and didn't want to spend no money. He had oh, hundreds of dollars in his, in his skirt and the blouses. He carried all the money in there. When she died, they found out all this money in there. And he had about uh, ten, fifteen thousand dollars in there. Wow. And the old man, was he was an old man too, but he wasn't, he wasn't dumb for nothing. But the little lady was saving all the money. You know, I don't know what's full. But he didn't want to spend the money. Okay, Antonia, I don't know if you can talk a little bit about um, your work uh, during the Christmas time and what happened with the people that you worked with. Well, to those things, the people that were nice and they give us a little money to help us out. And everybody was very nice and give us envelopes of money and we travel. And then these other ladies that went into the city hall and talked to us to give us more money, but they don't want to give us no more money. You can give us a little raise to give us a raise. And sometimes when they give you a three cents raise, there was no money there. They don't want to give us money. And then well, I got to work. I had to, I had a job. I had to do it. He's, he was here. It has to be less money, but I was working. And then working, and then she said, well, okay, you're going to work over here. This job is going to be, going to work with a, a sewer line. So they gave me a truck. I used to drive with a truck. A sewer truck with the, all the machine, all the cables and everything. I used to go out and run all the lines. And sometimes it was so bad that other people that they were cleaning right. And then I went in and it took me almost all day for just one line to finish because there were so many rooms. I used to ruin about bigger than about that round, come out in the car and they had to take it out back and forth, back and forth, cut it out and cut a big car. First I got it with a three inch car and then a, and then a six inch car to clean it up right. And that was a sewer line. The a sewer line. line, yeah. And then sometimes they used to work, well, we used to work there, and then they gave me a radio, so I had to work on calls. Sometimes I used to go home and nine, ten o'clock at night, so they hey, call me on the radio, they said, you gotta come on home. People are getting flooded. They said, you gotta have to come and run them. Uh, the uh, manholes because they were running over and they were stuck and the water was going into the house. And then about nine, nine or ten o'clock I used to go there and clean the carpet. I had to clean the carpet for, to take it out because it was just all, so messy. And, that was, and then part of the times I used to run and they said, well, let's plug it up. you got to run that line and then they could have no chance to, to take the truck in. You had to run it by hand, and sometimes, sometimes I had to have about 600 feet, 300 feet. I had to run it by hand, take them up there behind the houses, and run it by hand. And then you had to do a bar, and I turn it, turn it, I get to open them. Wow. But uh, that was, a, and then sometimes I used to clean the station, the stations, the plant, and sometimes the pump would go up. You had to go down, and that big mess to get the boat's house and we can bring the pump up and put another one. And then your hands would get black. It take me more than two weeks to, to clean it up. Wow. And was there a lot of cockroaches? There a lot of cockroaches, a lot of stuff, a lot of sand. 
You have to clean them up, and then they have to wash it, and then they have to wash them up. Afterwards, they have another truck, and they give you another truck with a big barrel, and they have to wash them, wash them to the station. So some rooms are big, about this size of the room. You have to go there and wash the walls and everything to keep it clean. And then they had about 24-inch pipe with the water coming in. And then they had to wait about probably about 10 to 11 o'clock at night so nobody, nobody was using the bathrooms or anything, because there was a lot of water coming in. You had to clean up. To clean up when everybody was in sleep, so you had to go over there and clean them up. At night with the hoses. Yeah, so, and then afterwards, I, I was doing that, and then and that says, well, you know, I'm not going to give you another job. I'm gonna, you got to get your little, get your truck and you go over there and check all the pumps. All the lead stations out on, on the hills and the street, and and see that it's working okay. You watch your controls. And they have big tools about the high. I had to push some of the buttons to get it started. Uh, and was this just the, for the wa drinking water? Or? No, the sewer lines. The sewer, the sewer lines. Line, that's where the sewer line comes into the pump. Oh, okay. And then you have to pump it up. And that's the the, the motor step. To, yeah, to pump the water out. Because there's a lot of hills in Prescott. So. Yeah, there's a lot of hills. And they had to go out there in places you can't even get the truck in. You had to run up in. And then you had to watch out because my other guy, he, he wanted to be in a hurry. Sometimes he turned around and, and they had too much too much train on it. And sometimes he just turned around. He hit my head. His head was a little head because he had to put a little handle to turn the, the cable off. And he was in a hurry, he bent it up. And one time, one time he had too much pressure on it when he was hanging up. He tried to pull it, and when he pulled it, the little bar went up and hit right here. And he put on two seats. And oh, wow. So then there was, it was dangerous there. It was dangerous. <laughs> and then they used to, used to and then they, when they rain or the creeks, they get flooded and running, you know. And then they, the, the water would take the pipes off. And then they had to go over there underwater to fill the, where the pipe is to hook it up again. And the water was ice in the winter time. Hey, no good. And it was cold, I imagine. And it's cold, and then I had to get it there. And then I had to take pipes to, to hook them up. And, and then that, uh, right there was the, the building of new houses over there in the Willow Creek. They, they had manholes on the and right in the middle of the creek, and there was so much water, it turned the manholes over. And that, you know, manholes are there, there was about four feet, five feet high, out of cement, and the water just turned them over. Oh, wow. And then they had to go back and clean it up and, and get a brace and get a jack and raise them up and then set it down, and then they get another pipe and put it together back. Wow. And so and then, oh, go ahead. And then they used to uh, build manholes down the streets on the highways and the street. They used to uh, build manholes because they put new pavement on it. And then you had to go there and dig it out and put some more blocks on it, uh, uh, bricks, to build it up and then fill it up with, with cement. And sometimes stuff, sometimes you stuff from the bottom, sometimes put the bricks. Wow. And so then did you retire then from the city? Yeah, then I retired. I put in uh, 23, 23 years for the city, so I retired. And that's the city of Prescott. So now we're going to finish up, and I'm going to ask you some questions, just your opinion. And then thinking back on your work and your experience as the, at the Iron King Mine, what do you want your grandchildren to know about it, like your work at the Iron King Mine? Well, that's the only thing I see. I see. Worked down underground for so so deep. Ran all the machines that they had down there. All the equipment to hang the pipes and rails and set up the machines and and then working the grill, bringing rocks and and finally that to they used to go out and bring some more material, to lumber to press them up so. So it would be tight, so it would get in. And they used to post a 
like a 10 by 10 to brace it, to brace it up and they have the stuckers and put it in and they hit it with the axe to, to, to make it tight so it won't get loose. So then you want them to know all the work you did, the hard work that you did. Oh, the hard work. And then uh, how do you want the memory of your work and your experience in general to be remembered at the Iron King? And your brothers too. And the brother. How do you want that memory? Do you want it to be of a hard worker? A hard worker, yeah. You have to be hard work. And when I was working, I work for, uh, I never uh, slack up or anything. Like other guys, sometimes you do the little job. Hey, I want to get something here. I, I got to go up there and get the spark. And then they go up there and then they mess around after two or three hours. Then they come back and they say, well, well what happened? Ah, oh, I got tied up with it, but they never tell me what they're doing. But they went out, they don't want to work. Yeah. And then they used to bring stuff and say, oh, I got to go get this, I got to go get this. And then they'll come back two or three hours later. And now I'm over here digging holes to hang the pipe up there, the insulation, and water lines. And, and they had to, to put pipes, a 24-inch pipe, and then get a gun and sack with wet up with cement. And then cover it up so the air don't go out. And I have to get all that material all day. Mm. So yeah, so then you did all this hard work, and then sometimes some of your fellow miners were up there. Yeah, they're messing around. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they were, what happened? Oh, the guy tied up. Well, what did he do? I don't know. I'll just. They won't tell them what they're doing outside. Yeah. And is there anything else that you want to comment or say before we move on to the second part of the... Well, I used to bring all the jackhammers to drill. Because they're heavy. They're about bigger than this. Bigger than this sand here. They're heavy. I had to go to the station and get them and bring them back. And then set it up so I could start drilling for ice beams to hang the material up there. And and then I put a little cut before I cut in. I put a little bell. I put a little bell. For I had to about I had ten cars going into the side to fill them up. And then every time I ring the little ring the little bell, then I move my truck. And then the guys ring and ring. And they saw it. He was already filled. And so he ring the little bell. I move the material, the little bike back. And so that little bell would tell people that, it helped all people still. that you were filling up. Yeah, I was coming down with a big load on it. So it would be out of my... And then I told my switch to one side so I could get out. And as I get up, I get off and then walk back and I, I turn the track back so the other car, the other people go back. So he can go this way and then I go this way. And those were the wise. Those were the wise, yeah. That you are talking about. To get in. Wow. Then I had then I, uh, then I had another place that I think it was a 15 lever. They had an air air doors. You had to go, f well maybe about, about 100 feet back. I think 50, 40, 50 or 100. They had to put the button so the air to open the door because it was a air pressure. Huh? You had to get open it before you start going with your material, going to the station for all the car you got. So it was, she would hit the door, had to push that button to, to, for the air to, doors to open, to go across. And was there any accidents with those doors? No, the fire fire, no, no. Oh, okay. Sometimes the people, well, one of the guys he, he was just playing around, he was playing around and pulled around and knocked the cars off. Oh. And then wasted a lot of time to mm -hmm. try to pick it up and then they were loaded. I had to get jacks to prepare it up and put it set, set it back in the track. Okay, Antonio, can you talk a little bit about what you have in your hand? Well, I have in my hand a, a lamp to work, to wear my on my head, and, and put water, put water here, and let it set, and then this is your flame where you want a big light or a small light. You turn it this way. 
turn it like that, make it brighter, light. And then you turn it down so you want a medium. And then you get your sparkle over here and clean it up a little bit and put a little needle on it to clean it up. And then you get this, the sparkle and take this, take this back, take it out, and then you put your sparkle in there. And then you turn it around. And then after it's all set, set up, and you put it in your, and light it up with a match, and then you sparkle it, and then you turn this to see how much light you want it, and then you put it in your, in your head, in the head. And as you walk down, down to the shelf, whatever you want to go walk in, you got your light on. And then this part of here, if I don't know, I don't remember where I got that part. Well, it's been there for a long time. But that's the only way you can light it, put water here, and then to turn your knob over here, so much water will go in. And then you head up in the head, and then you turn this little wheel here to make a spark so you can light it. And can you show us the powder? Oh, very good. And so that is what you would put with yeah, the water? Yeah, he said the, this water goes in, it comes up to here, and it drops on here like a little spot. Uh, drops and then gets a, a, enough water there and then and then you close it and then you take a little bit and then you just do that the sparkles. to sparkles to, to light it up and as the sun light out you put you know time your your light and you put it in your head and walk on and walk on and walk up yeah. I don't remember how you were was this when I got and the other day when I went out to other houses, I don't remember the little lamp of oil. And I looked for it, funny I found it, but I had it was the stuff I brought. I mean, I'm going to clean it. It's had a little rust because it's been there so long. I scraped it a little bit. But, well, when I was ready to go to the underground, I get my lunch, get my, my clothes, and get uh, maybe a, a rope or something for in case I, I pull something. And then uh, at lunchtime, we used to set it there on the side where I was working on the side. And then it was time to, to eat. I'd go down and sit down on the rock or a bench, whatever it got down there. And then i open it. i clean it up a little bit and then i open it. And then i get my lunch and then my coffee here. And then i close it. And then i turn around and sold it up. But I don't think it's a house number, but... But it's just the same thing. And then I walk down. Look my name, name, initial sign. And, and I walk down to, down to the uh, underground, going down and take my lunch and everything. And then I get my lunch and come up and get my medal and put it back where it goes. And I was doing okay. And what did you eat for lunch typically? Well, I ate some. Lunch made, uh, hot some weenies sometimes, or uh, cheese crease I used to do sometimes, I do it and put it on. I had my coffee with sugar and coffee, I mean milk, and it just stays there. And did you eat underground? We eat underground, we sit down, wherever we place food, we can sit down. And sometimes I put a, a little big rock like that, I, I put it there and I put one in here and put the lunch in. I did it from here, underground. And did you eat with other people, with other miners? Well, yeah, with well, the uh, partners. Yeah, I had a partner like his dad, or he's either come, they come, they eat together. Sometimes they come. And, oh, no, I can here. I'm gonna eat together. So we eat, and he goes that way, and I go this way to go to work. And what was your partner's name? Do you remember? Uh, it was uh, Ibarra, Frankie Brown. And then another guy from uh, Jerome, his name was Jesse, but I couldn't remember the last name. Jesse he used to come in and say, oh, let's have a lunch. I'll sit here with you. Let's have lunch together. Was it Jesse Carreras, do you know? Oh, he, he was uh, working outside with my brother outside. Oh, okay. He's all unloaded and I'm loading down. Uh-huh. So that was then your lunchbox you used at the Iron Yeah. Game. Okay, time's good, time to go home. That's good.
Gemalata is just, just a word. How are you? Comedy? <laughs> Nenatory? Okay, you know what? Just sit there for a little Sit down there for 10, 10 or 15 minutes, and then we go to sleep. You see, it was so hard, it works so hard. I relax after I eat and relax. And we went to sleep, and then say, ah, oh, oh, sleep. <coughs> And then first you're going to see the case coming down, the boss are coming down. Hey, hey, the boss is coming down. What, 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 what are we doing? Well, I look at my watch. Hey, I've been sleeping here for two hours. <laughs> he said, well, let's get up. Let's get up. Let's go faster. Go back at the, and, and pretend we were doing something. You know? Now, sometimes he goes all the big round, but he would come and sometimes to check and see what we were doing. Yeah? Well, and then it's so gassy and sleepy. Especially when you work a graveyard, you stay all night. And then they eat your lunch, and then you relax, and, ah, we went to, went to sleep. Hey, we went to sleep for two hours. Let's, let's get out of here. He said, well, well, give me a little book. I'm, I'm right here. So many cards I put in, but I never put no food. I just put it up, but I never, I never fill them up. I said it like that. It's about... Uh, I was set up about maybe 30 to 40 times a day, carrying the horse to the station, bring the car, load them up, all day. Sometimes I make about three or four loads, and that was it. And it's time to quit. So that was a lot of ore you brought out. Yeah, a lot of ore, yes, a lot of ore. Wow. Is there anything else that you want to share? Uh, then yeah, when they bring it up, sometimes they used to, I used to go up up there when they had a little more time. I used to go up with the other guys and just, uh, up to the meal for the meal, the grinder. They used to grind it well, after I did, did two cut on the ground and put it up and then dump it in like a, a grinder and dump it with us, the whole thing. And then this machine would run it and run it and crank, crank it and bust it up. And then after it all cut up, it goes down to the to the to the level to the next level, where the big bucket is, and then they and then they then they fill her up, and then they and then they put it up to a, a belt. After it all whole grind up and everything, they run it, and then they put a safety uh, belts on it, load on them up there by the, at the tank where they would put it on, and then from there they used to fill the truck and take it down to, down to the railroad tracks. That, that, and send it to Texas. And then they, they used to send it to Texas. They used to send it to El Paso. And there was a, you see, it done a lot of truck I don't know how many trucks they had after, after, afterwards. But they used to tell, there was one big rock, oh, maybe about that big. It went into the ground as the first granite. And then the rock just kept growing and growing. Couldn't break it. Couldn't run and run and run and finally it got stuck in the, in the plate. It got so tight, and it popped. It went up to, to the ceiling. It went up to the, to the roof. It came out to the roof, and, and it never broke. Really? So it was so hard, so hard. And do you know what was in there? I, I never. Well, they took it to, to the to the mine. I mean, to the surface outside, and they tested it and see, because they had another guys with. Uh, checking all the doors, and, and they had goals, and they had to take the goals to the side. Wow, and so did it, it didn't hit anybody? When no, it, it don't hit it. It, just, it was so tight, it got so tight, it popped out. It popped, and it went into the ceiling, and knocked the roof off. <laughs> but I, I never knew who, what kind of rock was it, or what was it. It was so hard. Because it was iron, I think iron. Probably iron, lamps, and something else in there, but it's all mixed up. Yeah, because it looked great, kind of green and kind of purple. And then you see a little strip of gold in the wall. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. He said, oh, I'm going to take some of this. <laughs> you can't take it. <laughs> well, I said to myself, I won't take it because they did get you there. And then sometimes you used to, when you were coming to the station to go out, and sometimes the buses would check the lunch bed and see. You said taking anything out of it. Oh, okay, so making sure you were... You sure as you were not taking anything out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they had gold. That's they true. got gold. Yeah. I see a big piece about that big, very big one like that. Wow. 
because the a lot of money in there. Yeah. And then the guys over there, they they they, they dump it over there, and they wash it down, and they, they spread the gold to the to the sink one side and the gold to the other side, and then they put some kind of a, a metal. Wow, and that's how they would separate. We separated. And that was up up in the surface. In the surface, yeah. That they did all that. And the yeah, outside this. So then your lunchbox has a lot of history. Right? Yeah, it's got a history. And that, and I move over here for well, I do work in my lunch. I know I have a lunch, but I don't know what happened to it. Then I start cleaning the house to move over here, and then I found it. Ah, oh, here's my lunch here. I said, yeah, I've been looking for it. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> and then I keep growing, and then I found this little lamp. He said, well, I know I had a lamp of fire right here. I don't even know. He'd been there over there seven years, and uh, finally I found it. He was over here. I brought it over here, it was in the box. Uh -huh. Is that all? I'm going to say this is in tech now. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with yeah. me. Yeah. Well, pretty nice. Yeah, that is. You can pass it. But the ones that the mine had, these had a little, uh, oh, probably about half of this light. He just, the, the battery the battery was about this high, about this wide. Then they had a light on it. You had a clamp on it so you could put it in your hand. But they had a cable on it. Okay. And then you get your lamp, your numbers, your lamp. Then you go to work, and then when you get out of work, you take it out and then put it put it to charge it again. Oh, okay. So they had batteries. They had batteries. Uh -huh. They had about two setups on it. For the other people come in, they have two batteries. And then the other guys had another one for the night ship, and then another one for the night graveyard. So every time you come up, you put your batteries to charge, mm -hmm. so you have it ready for next morning. Mm -hmm. But the one that you showed me earlier, the one is the older style. Yeah, the older style. Yeah, and you use that type in the mine. In the mine, yeah. Yeah, wow. <laughs>